Back on Inside Tennessee with the interim president of the University of Tennessee system, Susan. Randy, when I went to work for the University of Tennessee in 1988, Lamar Alexander had just become president. And one of his goals as a two-year president was to get us in the top 25. More recently, Jimmy Cheek as chancellor wanted to get us in the top 25. And I know you're someone that likes metrics and wants to see measurements achieved. Is that still a goal for the University of Tennessee? Or are we looking at individual colleges to be in the top five or 10? I think the, the rankings, and there's a lot of rankings, not just the US News and World Report, right. uh, which I would like to suggest that that's not the, the holy grail of all rankings. There's a lot of rankings and a lot of things that we can measure. But I think and there's some things in that metric that I don't necessarily uh, uh, agree with how they weight certain things. So we're going to focus on the things that we think that matter. Uh, one of the things that we want to make sure that we do a better job of is graduating more students. What's important to the state of Tennessee? The people of the state of Tennessee, the business of the state of Tennessee, the, the students of the state of Tennessee don't really care about a ranking. They want to get a great education so they can get a great job. Our state needs us as a university to produce more talent to fill the uh, needs of our workforce. And so our goal is to graduate more students uh, and prepare them for the right jobs. So that's what we're going to be focused on. If that helps move us up a ranking, that's fine. But it's not about the ranking. It's about fulfilling our mission. There's also uh, you know, two part or three parts to our mission. It's educate. It's also to um, uh, connect, uh, and that's connecting with our community, and I'd love to talk more about some of the things we're doing there, and also about our research. Uh, we're a great research institution. We want to do more of that. So those are the things that we're focused on. If we do those well, the rankings will come. You, um, uh, pretty soon after you came in, you said you wanted uh, more transparency, yeah. and uh, you began very quickly to pursue that, and you've created an advisory group, full disclosure. I'm part of that Thank now. You. Thank you. We just met last week for the first time. Uh, it's quite a diverse group. Um, there are a lot of things that you want to do. A website's been created now. Uh, we may have a link to that that we can show folks at home, but you, you want to put as much information uh, as you can on that. Can you talk a little bit about sort of what your intent is uh, with this group and just in general in terms of becoming more transparent as it benefits the people of the state of Tennessee? I think just philosophically, um, I've always believed that transparency and information was important uh, at my company. We believe in empowerment. I believe the people that can make the best decisions are the people on the front line. So we want to empower them. The corollary to empowerment is information. It's hard for your employees to make good decisions if they don't have good information. So as a business person, I've always provided every bit of information we possibly could to our people on the front line. I think as an as a enterprise, having all of our employees have all the information will make them uh, more effective. But then you know, when I became Commissioner of uh, Economic and Community Development, I recognized that there's concerns amongst the public about what's happening within government. So we created a transparent ECD. So this isn't really a new idea. It's a continuation of the things that I've done in the past. And also, uh, early on, I spent 60 days traveling around the state talking to stakeholders and something I heard often was they wanted more information. And we thought, you know, all this information is public anyway. If you wanted some information on salaries or on contracts, uh, it's all public. So rather than having to make you ask us for it, and uh, we'll, we'll just be proactive. And so the idea behind the website is, one, to make everything more, more transparent, more accessible, and also easier to query. The new uh, that dashboard that we're going to create will make it not only easy to make not all the information available, but also easier to, to search. What's become apparent to me, and I think the other folks on the group, is the massive amount of information that's actually available, but it's not, it's not curated. Yeah. It's all over the place. And this would be one place where you could go for all kinds of stuff on all of the campuses. Yeah, it's, it's one thing to say that the information is public. It's another to make it easily to, easy to access. And so the, the second part of this is making it easy to access. And you know, so one of the things that um, obviously this accomplishes is providing more information to our employees and to the public. But another thing I think it does is changes our culture. And one of the things that we want to do is to create a culture of transparency. And I've already seen that in meetings. When people are talking about a particular subject, the first thing somebody will say, or eventually they'll say is, oh, we need to put this on the website, don't we? We need to make this meeting more public, don't we? So um, I'm hopeful that a legacy could be a culture that always thinks about being transparent. One of the things that we ask our universities to do is tackle big problems. Um, one of your efforts is to tackle the opioid crisis. Can you in explain what the involvement you see the University of Tennessee can have on tackling that issue? And when I became interim president, I was really excited about the impact that we could have on education. But one of the things I had previously been passionate about was 
uh, focusing on our opioid crisis. And I was concerned that at this new job that was lost. But very quickly, I, I got to go visit with the people at the College of Social Work in Knoxville who are doing great things around opioid addiction. The University of Tennessee Health Science Service uh, or Science Center in Memphis is also doing some great work on uh, providing better uh, instruction to, to physicians on how not to overprescribe. UT's um, medical center has a Dr. Tower that has created a protocol that helps reduce the risk of babies being born with NAS. Uh, the Oak Ridge National Labs, we have a professor there that has access to a supercomputer and a million veterans' uh, health records. He's looking at mining that data to do some predictive analytics. The problem was all these different people weren't talking. So we brought them together along with other leaders across the state. And I think it's an opportunity for us as a, as a system to pull all of our resources together to have even greater impact. I mean, that's something that, that uh, is one of our, our top six uh, objectives is to make a, have a greater impact across the state in areas that our state needs our help. And Randy, related to that and sort of bringing it home, what are the campuses, UTK, Martin, Chattanooga, doing to help students that might have alcohol and drug uh, abuse problems? They're, it's rampant in college yeah. and it's real. I see it in my line of work, certainly. What, what is available to keep students there instead of just running them off campus, which is sort of what used to happen, versus this is a place to learn and to get better? And what are you trying to do there, if anything, yet? No, I think that's a, that's a great question. We've got a great team um, led by, uh, there's a lady at Knoxville uh, and also works with the system named Ashley Blamey that's doing some really great work with the students. Sure. But there's a whole team of people at, at all the campuses that um, I'm really proud of the work they're doing. We, we recognize that uh, addiction happens on our campus right amongst our family and we need to uh, start at home. And is there an effort to keep students that say, may be found with drugs that they're abusing, and I'm not talking about dealing, to keep them on campus and to get them help versus expel them and get them off campus where really then any resources they might have might very well be gone? Uh, this, we, we want to make sure that we're helping all of our students be successful here, and we've got a great resources to help support them. Back with more from Randy Boyd after this short break on Inside Tennessee. Question. 